Last year, in the early days of the first lockdown in Germany, in several conversations with different friends, we were full of both hope and skepticism. We talked about how the pandemic made certain things more visible, uh, things that could not be ignored anymore after the evidence of their shortcomings being so overwhelming. People clapped for nurses, doctors, health workers, and we deeply hoped that this would not be an empty gesture. We talked about how surely it would be obvious that there is no way to look at the world except as a continuum beyond geopolitical, racial and class divides, and that because of the globalized character of our present, for the pandemic to be under control somewhere, it had to be under control everywhere. Uh, and we extensively discussed the implications of this realization. It wasn't a new realization, uh, but surely one that being so clear or so crystal clear, we thought, um, would operate or start operating a shift towards further development of politics of radical solidarity. It was with great dismay, but not with great surprise, uh, that we witnessed the, furthering, the further deepening of the split along the lines of race, class, gender, and further categories and their complex entanglements. Uh, the possibility of agency in relation to being more or less likely exposed to the virus became yet another measure of privilege. And the collapse, as it turns out, were a bitter premonition, not of a radical kind of solidarity, but of a performative one. Some of the things that we both knew and have realized for the first time or once again from this can be briefly summed up in the following thoughts. Solidarity should not be a crisis response but a continuous, constant practice that infiltrates every aspect of life radically. The acknowledgement of one's position within complex and intertwined networks and webs of privilege beyond declarations of guilt could be a useful tool for the figuring out of one's possibility of action and agency towards a more solidary everything. Reforms may bring along significant and rather immediate improvement to numerous situations and countless people. However, they are often compromises at the service of neoliberal agendas carried out under the guise of care and protection, when neither of the latter are intended or effectively practiced. Differential citizenship is a thing. And state legitimized authority and law enforcement handles protection as a differentially distributed resource at every level. It also prioritizes the mobilization of a disproportionate amount of means for the safekeeping of mostly highly valued private and intellectual property. The time to challenge the legitimacy of all of this and all that that implies feels long overdue. The current system is indeed highly adaptable and will concede the collapse of some of its parts and the erasure or eradication of many of its peoples in order to maintain its status quo, its visible and less visible structural anatomy and its enduring necropolitics. It is difficult to not just give in to the hopelessness of it all. However, we must remind ourselves that there are elements of our shared world that have resisted and tirelessly continue to resist assimilation, absorption and alignment into the centralized monolithic narratives that seem to scream at us that the only reality possible is a dystopian nightmare of the present. There are fundamentally different ways of being in the world that could create fundamentally different presence. 